This is the guts of a piece of crap no name uh, made in China. A CR123A cell charger for recharging rechargeable CR123A cells. And as is to be expected, the design is a piece of crap. This is the or what passes for the input circuitry as is to be expected this is just some kind of an oscillator driving a transformer not a true switching power supply and it drives in some kind of pulse fashion I guess because there's just halfway rectification on the output which with with um, what I presume is some kind of ultra fast rectifier but I can't really read the part number on it but it's got um, eight one, one in one in something eight one nine if it'll focus and there's two transistors in this so this isn't quite as simple as some of the bare bones blocking oscillator topologies that I've seen there's that one which is S S8050 or D331 that might be SD331 which is I think a part number for these but I don't really know this is an MGE13001 that's fairly typical for you find one of the really dinky blocking oscillator ones and as you can clearly see there is uh, the actual circuit as built bears no relation whatsoever to the silk screen on the printed circuit board and of course it's just half-wave rectification on the input with uh, this resistor which is for I'm guessing used as a fusible resistor but that's not even a proper fusible resistor it's a half-watt conventional resistor uh, 1 ohm and that piece of crap capacitor can't read the branding on it but the codes on the side are similar to some Aishi or Aishi or however you pronounce it a uh, piece of crap chai uh, capacitors that are commonly found in uh, compact fluorescent lamps and that are high ESR garbage so that might be an Aishi capacitor or whatever wouldn't be surprising and of course also it's 35 volts or no 50 volts at one mic uh, one microfarad at 50 volts so obviously it's, I don't know some of there might be one of these might be a clamping dad just to keep that from getting inadvertently popped or that's a really crude really horrible design and the charge management is similar because LM358, fairly standard operational amplifier. That's all that's handling the charging. And the way this works is that there's a green light that's continuously on this uh, bicolor LED, which, by the way, doesn't even match the silk screen. It says that it's a um, common anode on the, on the silk screen when it's a common cathode device. So, another fail. Um is there's this which just applies pulses of electricity to the cell until the cell potential reaches a certain level in which case it shuts off and one thing to note about that is that that logo is clearly designed to rip off the Fairchild logo that's TF so I'm guessing or FT so those are probably the um, initials of the fab although aside from that the quality of the package aside from those uh, marks right there Actually, remarkably, remarkably good and even better than some genuine part packages that I've seen, although the what's inside could be another matter entirely. Aside from that, just a load of passives. That which may or may not be a 1% tolerance resistor, or a genuine 1% tolerance resistor, obviously being used as some kind of a potential divider or something. Some diodes. That device, which is another... That's one in SS8550 as opposed to the SS8050 there, same D331, so don't know exactly what device that is, but, uh, and of course, a piece of crap transformer, and of course, on the other side, more horror, 
As to be expected of modern crap, it's uh, lead free, which means that all the solder joints look like crap, and many of them, such as that one, and one others. Uh, that one right next to it. A lot of them are just crap because, again, lead free solder is crap, but that's a given. Uh, horrible clearance. 200 mils at best and not much better you can see there for the optional DC input jack for which there is a little knockouts on the back of the case for which was not fitted uh, there is an option for an external DC which I don't know I recall measuring the operating potential the, uh, of the circuit and this is about 7 volts or thereabouts might go up to 12 volts might not don't want to risk it Although these things usually do. You can see that they didn't even bother um, leaving holes in the solder mask around the uh, uh, for the uh, holes in the PCB for putting in the uh, jack. So yeah. Again, even worse clearance there. Even though this particular track is just dead copper. Um, it does make would make flash over that much easier, especially considering that this is paper laminate crap. And yeah, although it does look like at least most of this is wave soldered, although there is this uh, glass package diode. Might be clamping, might be logic, don't know, but whatever it is, it's not a power. It's not a high power application. And of course, for uh, more horror. Oh, by the way, just uses the standard and one of the International Electric Technical Commission uh, series of connectors. Don't recall which that is exactly, but the piece of crap mains cord that it came with. The plug is, is seems to be seems to be somewhat robust. I did see one piece of crap one on uh, YouTube which used a uh, Euro plug, and the guy was just able to rip the thing to pieces. Um, if I can find it again, I'll post a link in the description. Um, but clearly inadequate by our standards because on the side, and if I can find a marking on it, uh, it's 300 volt, 300 volt. Doubt that. It's got the, of course, the uh, Triple C China Compulsory Certification. It's got that long code, which don't know exactly what that is. Um, the uh, triple C, by the way, is the only approvals mark on the thing at all. And there's that um, two conductor um, half millimeter or half square millimeter, which equates to about 19 gauge or 20 gauge. So it's, of course, completely inadequate for mains use in this kind of an application where there's no fuse whatsoever. And um, claims that it's good for six amperes. And the plug, again, triple C. Another code. I um, doubt that greatly. 